What's up YouTube? So I've been getting some requests to do another van tour video and it's been a while since I did the last one. The van wasn't even finished and I wasn't moved into it so fair enough. I think it's time to do another one but uh, I'm just going to go over everything, the whole backstory in uh, excruciating detail. So if you just want to see the van tour then uh, you might want to skip ahead. But uh, the whole video series of me moving into a van and figuring things out, it's all here on YouTube. So if you got an afternoon to kill, it's all there for your uh, viewing pleasure. Unfortunately, I didn't do any video of the whole build process, and I regret that now. At the time, I just didn't want to fiddle around with all the camera work. It took me uh, two full months, uh, seven days a week, full-time labor to put it together. I had no previous experience with carpentry or electrical, so it took a lot of research and uh, cutting and measuring. I think you're supposed to do that the other way around, but uh, it turned out all right. Uh, it hasn't fallen apart yet. And I think uh, the point at where it is today is the final form. There's a few things I wish I could change, but uh, it's not going to happen unless I invent a time machine or start ripping things out. So why did I buy such a small minivan? Well, my budget was about 4,000 Canadian, so that meant a decent cargo van was off the list. I looked at a couple different SUVs, the Hyundai Tucson and the Honda CRV, but they were a bit too small for my needs. Would have been nice to have that all-wheel drive. I wish I could have got an Astro or Safari, but this is Canada. We got to deal with road salt, so a vehicle of that age is usually a complete wreck. So I looked at a few different minivans. Two of them were uh, salvage cases. Two of them were high mileage and required a lot of maintenance. And uh, then this one came along. It was well maintained, no rust, uh, about 185,000 kilometers, and it came with a set of winter tires. So I was sick and tired of looking around, and uh, I jumped at this deal. So this was just supposed to be a temporary setup. Uh, I wanted to live in the city, avoid paying rent, and uh, have the benefit of owning a vehicle instead of taking the bus everywhere. I was going to work through the summer, save up some money, then sell the van, get that money back, then go traveling. But uh, my first setup, I just had a mattress on the floor and a couple Rubbermaid bins. I was having a really bad time. I only lasted about two weeks like that. And that's when I decided to do the first iteration of my van build. It was still pretty basic. I just had a, uh, a bed that doubled as a storage trunk and a table and a jet boil stove. But uh, I didn't have any ventilation, so I wasn't comfortable running the stove for longer than a couple minutes. It was just uh, for boiling water for coffee. As far as food went, I was just eating uh, veggie wraps with deli meat on a daily basis. Um, and I just had a small inverter that was running off my starter battery, so I couldn't get much use out of that either. But I was enjoying myself. I was having a better time until the winter came. <laughs> and uh, I just had a, uh, a catalytic propane heater, the Olympian Wave 3. It's uh, kind of a fancier version of the Mr. Buddy. And uh, one thing that I really emphasize uh, for anyone considering living in a van where you have to deal with cold temperatures is absolutely do not buy one of those things. You're going to have a bad time. Uh, they create a lot of moisture and they also require ventilation. I understand that they're easy to set up, but uh, you're wasting your money. Go for a Chinese diesel heater instead. So it was probably a good thing that I lost my job in uh, February and uh, that's when I decided uh, to build this out into something more advanced. I've been doing outdoorsy things and exploring around for a while now so it was interesting to extend that lifestyle into a full-time functioning thing. So I decided I was going to stick with it uh, but my budget still hadn't grown. I couldn't afford to sell this thing and buy something bigger so uh, I built this thing out and here we are. But uh, my situation has changed a lot from when I first started. I used to be a factory worker and uh, now I've been a full-time hashtag van life YouTuber since August 2019. I need to start getting some of those uh, half-naked selfies out on the beach. Need to get on that, but uh, first let's do this van tour. So this is a 2009 Chevy Uplander, regular model, not extended. I'm 5'7", wouldn't want to be much taller than that for a build like this. It does have some stealth value. But if you look closely through the front window, okay, the front seat's missing, there's a bike there, something's going on. I suppose I could tint the front windows, that would help with that. But there's also some wires hanging down from the solar panels, and the roof vent is a dead giveaway. When I can back into a parking spot, that's what I do to conceal that. And I've been able to park in some questionable spots like shopping malls and casinos. I've got the Nokian WR G4 all-weather tires on there they do pretty good nothing extreme though I've got uh, tire chains 
and I've needed to use them a few times through the winter. I've got the intake and exhaust for the diesel heater here. It's not too loud on the lower settings. In the city, the background noise usually drowns it out. I built a custom rack to hold the solar panels. It's been really sturdy. Just needs a new coat of paint after the winter. The 200 watts of solar does a good job through the summer, but uh, from like November to March, I get basically nothing from it. Uh, I've considered getting a custom tilting rack fabricated, but no rush on that. My rear end is my tool shed. I've got my uh, diesel heater down there. I used to have this muffler on it. It brought it down to a near silent level, but it uh, caused too much back pressure and it stopped working. And I've got an insulated curtain over the, the rear window there. I think it's really cold. So this side is my garage. It's really starting to get packed full at this point. My fat bike fits in there nicely, but it's like playing a game of Tetris trying to get all this stuff in here. I've got a Linac LiFo 4 100 amp hour battery. And yeah, I know my wiring looks really sloppy. I started out with too small of a fuse panel, ran out of slots, and I just started piling things on top of the terminals. I know it looks really bad, but everything is fused, so it's safe. But uh, maybe one of these days I should take it apart and uh, make it look pretty. And uh, it's not good to leave the terminals exposed like that. So normally I try to put a cover over it. And it sits up about an inch off the floor to help keep it warm. And there are two temperature sensors underneath of there uh, so I can monitor it. It doesn't have built-in low temperature cutoff, so I have to do that manually. I've got a Renogy 40 amp DC to DC charger. It works really good. That got me through the winter when my solar wasn't providing anything. And I also have a 26 amp NOCO Genius wall charger. That helped me out numerous times through the winter as well. And there's a cutoff on my solar panels there in case it's a really cold day and I don't want to uh, worry about electricity flowing into my battery. And on this side I have the 10 liter tank for my diesel heater. Might be nice to upgrade that to a 15 or a 20 liter if it'll fit in there. And lots of stuff just crammed in every available spot. Here in the driver's seat I have a switch to turn on and off my DC to DC charger and a monitor so I can watch the voltage and temperature of my secondary battery. I've got a Renogy 2000 watt pure sign inverter. High quality, runs quietly. The pure sign is important if you want to run an induction cooktop or a brushless motor. But uh, I maxed out at 700 watts with it, uh, with my current battery. I just bought a big inverter in case I ever upgrade my battery. I'll just go over the back real slow. There's a lot to look at and take in. I've got three drawers underneath the bed for clothing and other things. The bed is a three inch thick foam mattress, nice and comfortable. I custom made those covers with a sewing machine. I can take them off when I want to and wash them. I use my sleeping bag. Nice and comfortable. It only takes a second to make my bed in the morning. Gotta love that. That's my dirty laundry compartment. I got a couple other shelves there. And a fire extinguisher. This controls my diesel heater. I can uh, set it up with timers to run automatically. I can turn my inverter on and off from there. The Max Air Mini Deluxe Roof Vent works pretty good. I chose it because uh, it has a low profile. It only stands about 4 inches above the roof. But uh, these LED lights, they burned out really fast and I couldn't replace them so I just drilled a couple holes in it and installed my own LEDs. And it closes up but it doesn't form a really good seal. If the wind is hitting it, it will let a draft in. And I installed a uh, speed control knob on there. From the factory, it only has one speed. Got a carbon monoxide detector slash methane. That's very important in a enclosed area like this. This is my kitchen. This is where all the magic happens. I've got two methods of cooking here. I use the gas a lot through winter when I'm not getting enough solar energy to power the induction. Well, this thing's awesome. I love using it. But when you have a household appliance like this, uh, you really got to have a battery monitor to uh, watch how much amperage is coming off the battery. This is just a cheapie I got off Amazon. It worked good for about a month, but now it's just completely haywire off into its own world. But it did give me a good idea how much energy this thing is drawing. And uh, from the battery, I max out at 700 watts, but that's enough to boil water and cook food more than enough. If I'm ever plugged into an electrical socket, then I can crank it all the way up. But uh, 1800 watts is uh, a lot of heat, more than you'll ever need. Underneath all that, I got my uh, garbage, a power bar, some more storage, 
and a uh, thermoelectric based cooler. This is one of my regrets. I wish I would have built in a real compressor based refrigerator from day one. And I just put a timer on it yesterday so if I'm out hiking all day long then uh, I can program it to turn off and on when I want it to. This is my solar charge controller. I really like how it has a display on it and I can keep track of things. Some light switches. The bottom one controls this vent. There are a couple computer fans in there and it blows warm air from my diesel heater onto my battery and that kept my battery nice and toasty through the winter. Worked really good. I can watch the temperature of it up here but my diesel heater is super powerful even at uh, close to minus 40. I'm just running it at half power. My van isn't insulated at all but uh, since I have this inner structure and then the outer structure of the van it's kind of insulated in its own way with an air gap. Stealth mode is activated. I can be in here with the lights on and uh, from the outside you'd never know. My bed swings up like a lounge chair. Super comfortable to sit there and uh, work or play on my laptop. The star of the show, good old Mr. Crockpot. This is where he hangs out. And I've got uh, easy access to my diesel heater if I ever need to do maintenance on it. Well, I think that covers everything. I've also made up a document that lists all the electronic items that I've used. So if you want to check that out, I'll link to it down in the description below. And uh, that's going to be the end of this video. So thanks for coming along, and we'll see you in the next one. The joys of living in a parking lot. we got someone doing a Kijiji deal over here. Somebody learning to drive over here. And somebody trying to shoot a video in here. <laughs>